Aume tā kā pi Čantēvaš tajā Juhāna nāpēķi jūzā paro. Mātu žūžu dukotā māki paro. Mini wakā o jāte nā sāniš, nā hedāca, nā hunkpapā o jāte kie mātaha. Hello, friends and relatives. We shake all your hands in a good way this morning. My name is Leander Russ McDonald. I'm from the Spirit Lake Dakota Nation, located in North Dakota. We're about 90 from Minnesota and 90 from the Canadian border, so we're about right there. I'm currently the president at United Tribes Technical College, located in Bismarck, North Dakota. So I'm glad to see a couple of our students here today. Where'd you go? All right. <laughs> and also, uh, this he's part of our group here today, which is uh, Indian University of North America. Let's give these students a round of applause for being here with us today. I would like to welcome you on behalf of the Crazy Horse Memorial Foundation, its board of directors, executive management team, the family of Korchok, and Ruth Jukolski, the staff, and myself, Dr. Leander McDonald. Today, you are part of the 33rd annual Crazy Horse Memorial Celebration of Native Americans Day. This is a day to recognize, honor, and celebrate all American Indians. South Dakota was the first state in the United States to observe Native Americans Day, and the first celebration was in 1990 after Go Governor George S. Mickelson signed a resolution calling for the second Monday in October to be Native Americans Day in lieu of Columbus Day. Crazy Horse Memorial is proud to host this event in keeping with its mission to preserve and protect the culture and having and living heritage of all, all North American Indians. Our program today will be a sharing of rich culture which fosters the understanding and reconciliation that is strengthened by all who celebrate this day. We will begin by posting of the colors. We ask if you, if you can to rise as our color guard makes their way into the frontier. Since the first celebrations at Crazy Horse Memorial begin, the Native American veteran post number one from Rapid City has proudly posted the colors. As they make their way this way, we want to recognize all American Indians, veterans, and those serving for helping us to achieve the highest enlistment and veterans rates of any other race in the nation. At this time, we'd like to call on Mr. Jahaziel Knife up to the stage to render the Lakota flag song on behalf of our veterans and their service to our country.
Marcus Jahazi, a little a round of applause. He's a citizen of the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. He is 15 years old and a sophomore in high school. He's an up-and-coming Lakota singer and enjoys staying connected with his culture through singing and dancing, among other cultural activities. Jahaziel is a strong role model for his peers and looks forward to becoming a strong advocate for Lakota people and helping bridge ra race relations among black, the Black Hills community. We're glad he's here and we're proud of him as a young man for carrying on our songs and our traditions and ways of life. With that, we want to call on Gabriel Knife, who's the mother of the Ina of Jahaziel. She is a citizen of the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe and is a well-known dancer and singer within the Native American community. She has won numerous awards for her power dancing and has traveled across Indian country sharing her talents. As an independent recording artist, Gabriel has been nominated for Debut Artist of the Year as well as Best New Artist for both the Native American Music Awards and Indigenous Music Awards. As a descendant of the Lakota warrior Crazy Horse, she feels it is her lifelong duty to share and express her language and cultural knowledge of songs and singing with all those who wish to hear. Let's give her a round of applause. Beautiful, beautiful. With that, carrying our Eagle staff today is Ed Cutgrass, United States Army. Carrying our other Eagle staff today, Dino Holy Elk, or excuse me, Holy Eagle, United States Army. And carrying the United States American Standard, Garland Not Afraid, United States Marine Corps.
Let's give our veterans and our singers another round of applause. As you can plainly see, we hold our veterans in high regard among our American Indian people, being the protectors and providers of our peoples. With that, I'm honored to offer a prayer on our behalf today. I've been asked by our relatives here to render that prayer, and I apologize to any of those that are older than me. Uh, if I make any mistakes today, I ask for forgiveness, and I ask that we all come in prayer together today uh, to thank the Creator. We come before you in thanksgiving for the many blessings you bestowed upon us. We thank you for bringing us together to celebrate the culture of the Native American people and the contributions they have provided to our society. We pray that you bless everyone here that's come to recognize uh, this day, as well as all the other events that are occurring through across Mother Earth. We pray that you'll be with us and guide us and direct us, and that you help us to continue to be good relatives to one another, and help us to see the similarities between all of our peoples, between all of our cultures, and moving forward, that we may have reconciliation one time, sometime down the road here, or even tomorrow, that we will get along as a people and recognize the benefits of that. We thank you for being here with us, for the relatives who have come to share their talents and their songs and their voices and their prayers and their dances. We pray that those are here to, to look on and to learn about our way of life. We pray that you bless each one of us here, our families, our communities, our nations, and that you help us to move forward in a good way as relatives. Thank you for being with us today at this time. How, Dr. Watson, all my relatives. With that, we ask that you have a chair. At this time, we call on one of our young relatives who I'm pleased to call Misu, or younger brother. He is the CEO of Crazy Horse Memorial Foundation, Whitney Recounter II, to share a few words. Whitney is Crow Creek Hunkpati Dakota from Crow Creek Sioux Tribe, and he previously served as associate director and instructor at the Indian University of North America at Crazy Horse Memorial. Whitney was a 2019 honoree of Western South Dakota Child Protection Council. He was named one of 605 magazine South Dakota Young Leaders in 2017 and served as chairman of the South Dakota Humanities Council and chairman of Visit Rapid City. For 11 years, Whitney had been director of the Ateapi program, a culturally based mentoring program which works with over 1,000 students each year in the Rapid City Area School District. Whitney has a passion to build bridges in the communities he serves and he is recognized throughout Indian country, both here in the United States and Canada for his speaking and emceeing Yampaha abilities. Let's welcome him to the podium, please. to uh, Dr. Leander Russ McDonald. Let's give him a round of applause, friends and relatives. <laughs> Good morning to each and every one of you. And as I woke up this morning, you know, knowing that it's Native Americans Day here in South Dakota, I was really feeling somehow I thought to myself, hey, you know, I'd like to go hunting the buffalo just like my ancestors used to. So I drove to Walmart, and uh, they were out of buffalo in the meat section. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's a beautiful day, and you know, even though it's Native Americans Day here in South Dakota, every day here at Crazy Horse Memorial is Indigenous Peoples Day, First Nations Day, Native Americans Day. <laughs> and this is due to the vision of our late founders, Chief Henry Standing Bear from the old Glala Lakota Oyate, the first cousin Tahashi of the late Crazy Horse. And uh, 
also when he called upon, he and the family came together and wanted a place for people from all over the world to come learn about the over 600 different tribes that exist in this country. And some of them are federally recognized, others are extinct. But nonetheless, the millions of indigenous people that live and that historically have lived here in this beautiful land carry on a lot of beautiful ways of traditions, the art forms, the languages, how to treat one another, how to take care, how to the hospitality when people visit. And yesterday, I had the opportunity this weekend to MC one of the largest cultural events here in the whole region, a, pl a, th a event called Black Hills Powwow, Chesapa Wachipina Oskate. And while I was there, one of my dance brothers from the Omaha tribe, he shared with me, he came to visit the memorial before the powwow, he traveled here. And he sang a song, and he recorded it, and he sent it to me. And yesterday, he told me the story as to why he shared that song. He said, long time ago, the Omaha tribe, during the wars, during the battles, they came across this warrior amongst the Lakota Oyate, known as Tashunke Witko, Crazy Horse. And so they gathered their strongest warriors, their strongest leaders, and they were going to go attack Crazy Horse. But when they came amongst Crazy Horse, they realized his tactics, his leadership, his courage, how he cared, the passion he had to protect the women, the children, the relatives. And so he said those strong, awesome Omaha warriors failed at their mission to take out Crazy Horse. And so after that, they respected Crazy Horse so much. They idolized him, the ultimate respect for somebody that wanted to protect the women, the children, and his courage. You see, when Crazy Horse was a little boy, he spent a lot of time with the elders. He was teased. He was picked on. He looked a little bit different. And so... When he spent and he learned with the elders, he took time and he spent time in the natural environment. And so he became very intelligent. He learned the ways of the wise ones. And so that's why Chief Henry Standing Bear, his Itansha, his, his cousin and the family wanted Crazy Horse to represent the North American tribes because even though it's Tashunke Witko that is being carved, it's this establishment, this organization is meant to bring to light the beautiful tribes that exist in this country. And so as we celebrate our 75th anniversary, we want to say thank you to the Chilkovsky family for dedicating their whole lives to starting this monument, for starting the work here. And I want to recognize uh, the grandson of Korchak Chilkovsky, we just want to say welcome here to our chief mountain officer as he picks up the mantle. And it took about 10 years to complete the surface area of the face. But to the, due to technologies and the hard work and uh, the, the mountain crew that we have up there, we were able to finish the hand in one year, which is the same surface area approximately of the face. So let's give Caleb Chukovsky, our chief mountain officer, and the staff and the team, the mountain crew, round of applause. And Caleb's right here in the back, ladies and gentlemen. He's, he, I want to look cool like Caleb one day and have shades on and, and just hang out in the back. But he's the grandson of Korchak and Ruth and uh, the Chukovsky family. Also, Viga, Monique, Adam, and all the family members. Let's give them all a round of applause and thank them for helping. <laughs> And that's a part of our organization. We have a university. We have the museum, the board of directors. They come together, and we want to show the world what happens when people from different cultures and races come together for a common purpose. 
And that's what we're most proud of here at Crazy Horse Memorial, is that you gather people that are allied together to help educate, to help share, to bring to light something that we should have done maybe a long time ago, but we are doing that today. And that's all because of our founders, Chief Henry Standing Bear, Korchak Jokowski, Ruth Jokowski. And Ruth also had an adopted Hunka sister by the name of Nally Tubols. We also want to recognize Lula Red Cloud, who spent a lot of years here sharing her arts and all the artists and all those that have been here through the years. But most of all, friends and relatives, ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you for supporting Crazy Horse Memorial Foundation, all of our staff, everyone that is here to help us in this quest to inspire people to continue to learn and respect indigenous peoples and cultures. So with that, we hope you enjoy the rest of your visit here today. I'm Petu Washte Yuhapo. Have a good day. Thank you. Our performance today will be presented by Star Chief Eagle. And I don't know if how many of you are watching Kora TV this morning. She was on air, but she provided a performance on air and uh, got to have a short interview with her. So I thought it really went well and represented our people well. I'd like to invite her to the mic uh, to share a few words. Star is a citizen of the Rosebud Lakota Nation, and she is an artist and hoop dancer extraordinaire. She has traveled all around the world teaching lessons of the hoop and sharing her culture. Star has performed here at Crazy Horse Memorial for 10 years as part of the Indian Museum of North America's culture program. Let's give a warm Crazy Horse Memorial welcome to Star Chief Eagle. All right, hello, hello. How's everybody doing out here today? All right, excellent. It's such a beautiful, gorgeous day to be here, be able to share a little bit of our culture with you all. We are gonna be sharing a little bit of hoop dancing. How many of you have seen hoop dancing? Raise your hands. For those of us who have never seen it before, I am here to tell you we are not going to be hula-ing with our hoops today. Instead, what we will be doing is be making different animals, shapes, creatures, designs. This is a storytelling dance, which we express ourselves through. Um, this is actually a family tradition that's been passed down within our families, and we're actually very happy to be able to continue on this tradition and continue to share it. These hoops, these symbols, they actually represent balance, represent unity, and represent healing. And as you guys see the different formations that we create with the hoops, it's going to represent all the different things existing in nature. So it represents the beauty of nature and our connection to it. Ah, we chuck pio hit the hawea hemayet, start chiefigo, macha pio, washi jimichaje kushto, se chango yate, mother hum, and eluza ha awati, plama madakia pio yase. So, hello, my, la, my English name is Star Chief Eagle. My Lakota name is Brave Star Woman. I am Rosebud Lakota from Rapid City, South Dakota. Very thankful to be able to share our culture with you, share our hoop dance with you here today. To thank you all as my relatives. Now I'd like to go ahead and give a warm welcome to some very special guests that I have here with me as well. I am accompanied by my older sister. Her name is Jasmine Pickner Bell. She's actually a world champion hoop dancer. She has inspired me throughout my life. If we can go ahead and give her a warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Jasmine Pickner Bell. And very fortunate to have a live drum here today. That drum beat's very special to our culture as well. That drum beat's gonna represent the heartbeat of the universe. So everything in nature and including ourselves connected to that. So very special that we have that live music here. We actually have the drum group North Bear present. So if we can go ahead and give them a warm welcome as well, ladies and gentlemen, North Bear. I invite you all to use your imagination, use your creativity. When you guys see our hoop dancing here today, is open to interpretation as long as you interpret it in a good, positive way. This dance is about the positive feelings that it brings. It's about coming together in a good, positive way. So I do thank you all. Please allow me a minute to get my hoop set up here today. Again, we have North Bear, Jasmine Pickner Bell, and my name's Star Chief Eagle. Thank you.
All right. And another round of applause for our singers. I don't know if you all know this, but I used to be a hoop dancer back in the day. Gained a few pounds since then, so I'm going to have to go to those hula hoops. <laughs> when I do my eagle, it'll really be a giant eagle. <laughs> or my giant world. <laughs> Our keynote speaker today is Dr. Jacob Weasel, a citizen of the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. Jacob Weasel, husband of 17 years to Lauren Weasel, father to Lighten, Judah, and Isabel Weasel, all of whom attend Rapid City Christian. Prior to studying medicine, Jacob received a degree in theology from Creighton University, where he graduated summa cum laude. He went on from there to attend medical school at the University of Nebraska Medical Center and completed his training in general surgery in Iowa. He currently works at Monument Hospital as emergency trauma surgeon serves as teaching faculty for three different medical schools and holds an assistant dean position with the University of South Dakota School of Medicine. On May 17th, 2023, Dr. Weasel became the first recorded Native American to summit the world's highest peak, Mount Everest. This achievement, along with Dr. Weagle's, Weasel's quest to summit the seven summits, the highest peak on each continent, has garnered public interest and attention. But this attention also expands beyond his mountaineering pastime and into a greater purpose. He set out to make it an example for others, especially Native youth, and generate support for the nonprofit organization he founded, the Wopila Project. Right now, the Wopila Project is raising funds for the construction of playground equipment in the Lakota Homes neighborhood of Rapid City and additional funds to help establish three women's health centers in rural Nepal. To date, Dr. Weasel's story is inspirational and we are eager to see what he does next. But we are blessed that he is here with us today to celebrate Native Americans Day. Let's welcome Dr. Jacob Weasel. Before I begin, I just have to say thank you to Star and her sister for that beautiful dance, uh, the hoop dance. And as they came up and were beginning to start, my uncle, he turned to me and he said, man, that's going to be a tough act to follow. And he was right. I thank you so much for, for that beautiful performance. And I'm joined here, um, have the special privilege of having my family here, my wife, Lauren, been married for 17 years, and I can tell you that of all the things that I have accomplished in my life, none of it would have been possible without the support of this woman. And all of us, I feel, know that uh, behind every good man, there is a great woman, and this is that great woman in my life. And so thank you. Uh, thank you, Lauren. Uh, joined also by a family of mine, uh, some as far as Fort Belknap, Montana. I wanted to say thank you to my Aunt Cindy, my Uncle Elliot Lemire for being here. Uncle Bud, Aunt Darla, making, it, making your way from Aberdeen, South Dakota. Pleasure to have you with us. And uh, thank you to everybody here on this Indigenous Peoples Day as we celebrate the first peoples of this land, the people that were here far before the arrival of any Europeans, um, and, and rightfully so. And I also want to say a special thank you to Mr. Travis Dewis. Travis, where are you at? Around the corner here. Thank you, Travis, for, for re yeah, give him a hand. All of the hard work that goes into making this day possible. Uh, thank you, Travis. Travis uh, reached out to me and extended this invitation for me to come and speak today. So thank you for that invitation. Uh, also, uh, I don't know where he's at. Whitney should be around here somewhere. But I want to say thank you to Whitney Rain Counter the CEO, and to everyone here at the Crazy Horse Memorial for this opportunity and this honor to be with you here today. And for me, it's a particularly special honor being able to address you all in the shadow of a memorial of a man so great as Crazy Horse himself. Crazy Horse is a man known for his silent strength and his ex exploits as a Lakota warrior. He was a man who carried himself with dignity and honor both on and off the battlefield. A man who let his actions speak far louder than his words, 
which unfortunately is a thing not often found in our world today. Crazy Horse served as an example to us all, as a man that we would all do well to emulate. But at the end of the day, that's what he was. He was a man. Legendary, yes, but a man nonetheless, a man made of flesh and blood, much the same as you and I. And as the years have gone on and the legend of this man has grown, I think that we can sometimes forget that he was a man much like you and I who would have woken up with the sunrise and laid down at night as the sun set. He was a man who most certainly must have felt like we all do at one time or another, the sting and the pain in the loss of life. He was a man who most certainly must have also felt the heights and the joys of friendship and love as well as the depths of despair and loneliness. And I think sometimes in life, the legend can overshadow the humanity of our heroes. And I think it's in times like these that we are do well to be reminded of not just the momentous occasions that have come to define the people that we put up on a pedestal and those that we look to as an example, but reminded of the everyday events that made them great as well as the momentous occasions. I recently had the opportunity to go back and reread Joseph Marshall III's book, The Journey of Crazy Horse. And in that book, he begins by telling the story of two young men who went out in the dead of winter to provide for their people as they were in need of food. And as these two young men went out into the Bighorn Mountains, they found themselves in the midst of a blizzard and they had to take shelter. And in the middle of the storm, they came across a herd of elk. And despite the sub-zero temperatures, they were able to take down several elk and bring the meat back to their people. Those two men were Crazy Horse and his younger brother, Little Hawk. And in so doing, Crazy Horse and his younger brother were able to stave off starvation for those that they held most dear in life. And I think Joseph Marshall uses this story to illustrate the fact that it was acts such as these in providing for the people, acts of kindness, acts of compassion, so many of which will never be known to history, but it was acts such as these as much as his acts of bravery on the battlefield that endeared Crazy Horse to his people and truly solidified him as a legend amongst his contemporaries. And as I read the story of Crazy Horse and Little Hawk and the day-to-day -day actions that they provided for their people, I left myself asking, so what lessons can we take from this story, from these everyday acts that may seem small in the moment but seem so much more in the long run? What wisdom can we glean and what lesson is there to be learned? And in regard to this, I would offer these remarks to you today. Do not wait for the punctuation marks of your life to write the story of who you are. If there's one thing I've learned in my journey through medicine or in the mountains, it's that the journey is always far more important than the destination. Ultimately, it's the process that matters most in shaping who you are as a person. And certainly there may be mountaintop moments in our lives. There may be great accomplishments, accolades, and recognition. But I'm telling you that those things, they will come and they will go. But true greatness lies in the day to day. Greatness is always found in the valley before it's ever realized on the mountaintop. And greatness is found in the decisions and actions made again and again to do the right thing, to invest into the lives of others, to serve rather than to be served, and to engage the world with compassion rather than disdain. So in my encouragement to all of us on this Indigenous Peoples Day, to all of you, is to become legendary in your own right by embracing greatness in the day to day. So fathers, mothers, become legendary to your children, instilling them with values to guide them through life, teaching them how to love, and to be loved, showing them their worth, and reminding them of the importance of remaining connected to their family, their community, the earth, and their creator. Grandmothers and grandfathers become legendary to your grandchildren. Aunts and uncles become legendary to your nieces and your nephews. Teachers become legendary to your students, and bosses become legendary to your employees. And remember that while no one on this planet can be a legend to everybody, we all can be a legend to somebody. Become legendary to those who matter most in your life. I remember as a young man graduating high school, I had the opportunity to deliver my commencement address at graduation. And I remember I was in a 
point in my life where I was truly searching for what it meant to live a life of significance. And as a young man, I remember asking myself time and again what it was that would lead to a life of significance for myself. And I remember coming to the conclusion at a young age that true significance in life is only found in service to others. I believed that now, and I believed that then, and I continue to believe that to this very day. It's been this conviction that has led to almost every decision I have made in my life. Searching for significance in serving others, in large part, fueled my passion to pursue medicine and serve others through the practice of surgery. And wanting to inspire others is ultimately what led to a decision to climb the tallest mountain in the world. Truth be told, I honestly never had any personal aspiration to climb Mount Everest, and I'm sure that my wife still <laughs> wishes that I didn't have any aspiration to climb Mount Everest. Um, but as I became more and more interested in mountaineering, I remember coming across an article about the first black man to summit in 2003. And I remember coming across another article about the first black woman to summit Mount Everest in 2006. And it really pushed me on this search, trying to ask and find the answer to the question of who was the first Native American to summit Mount Everest. And, and for years, I searched and searched. I looked on web pages. I looked at articles. I had our marketing team at the hospital look into it. They used artificial intelligence algorithms to try and identify who was the first Native American. And we couldn't find anything, which ultimately led me to the conclusion that Nobody had done it up to that point, and I remember having a conversation with my wife um, saying, well, nobody's been the first, so somebody should be the first one to do it. Why not me? And as plans fell into place and the opportunity arose for me to travel to Nepal and attempt to climb the world's tallest mountain, I remember sitting down to lunch with a friend of mine, a man named Gene Tyon, and another gentleman that perhaps some of you may know, a gentleman named Rick Two Dogs. And I remember Rick bringing me an eagle feather that he had blessed in ceremony and asking me if I would be willing to take it to the top of the world. And I told him that it would be my honor to do so. And as I left for Everest, knowing the dangers and the risks that that mountain holds, I left not for any personal fame or glory. I left so that in some way I could bring hope and inspiration to the lives of others who are pursuing mountains of other kinds in their own lives. And over the course of 47 days, traveling to the other side of the world, taking one step after another up and down that mountain, fighting through cold and exhaustion, being struck by a rock as I climbed up, and a rock came down, hit me about 70 miles an hour in the left chest and bruised my ribs. And continuing on from that and spending 20 hours in a long day going up the, to the summit of that mountain and back down and experiencing hallucinations and coming down from that and surviving two avalanches on the return back to base camp. I remember having gone through all of that, having stood on top of the highest point on our planet, having delivered that eagle feather to the pinnacle of Mount Everest, and as I returned to the safety of camp, having cheated death on several occasions, I posted a picture of that feather on the top of Mount Everest, and I wrote down these words, which I'd like to share with you today. And I hope these words speak to you, and I'm closing with this, but as I came back from the mountain, um, I posted a picture of that eagle feather and wrote down, this is an eagle feather blessed in ceremony by medicine man Rick Two Dogs from the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. It was given to me as a symbol of the Lakota people and native people everywhere across North America. Over the past three centuries, indigenous people of North America have experienced genocide, subjugation, attempts at cultural eradication and assimilation. Our people have experienced forceful removal from their traditional lands as well as treaty lands and placement on reservations, as well as removal of children from their families as they were sent to boarding schools and disallowed from speaking their language or practicing their religion. These injustices have created generational trauma and have broken the spirit of a people to the point where we often bear no resemblance to the strength of our ancestors. On May 17th, 2023, at 8.34 a.m., this feather was taken to the top of the world as a symbolic gesture and a call for us to rise above the injustices of the past. May we remember who we are. May we return to the values our ancestors held so dearly. And in so doing, may we find the strength that lies dormant within the spirit of a people. May we regain our identity. May we regain our values and in so doing, regain our strength. May we stop seeking division and discord. May we let go of hate and vengeance. 
but instead seek acknowledgement, reconciliation, and healing to move forward into a brighter future where we hold to those values once deeply embedded as the bedrock of our society. My message to Native people everywhere is that you are equally capable of achieving whatever it is you want in life. You are not a victim. Choose to not live life as a victim. You are not disadvantaged by virtue of your heritage, but you are advantaged by your heritage. You are strong, you are capable, and if no one else believes, know that I believe in you. Believe in yourself. Chase your dreams with passion, grit, and an undying will to never give up. There is a greatness that lies dormant in the spirit of young Native people. My prayer is that the greatness that we once knew would be reawakened once more. And this continues to be my prayer and my hope is that this may serve as an ember that will light a fire within your hearts as well. Wopila, mitakuye yasin. Let's give another round of applause to Dr. Jacob Weasel. inspirational words for all of us, whether we're young or old. With that, we move now to presentation of the Crazy Horse Memorial Educator of the Year Award to be presented by Angel Lee, Director of the Indian University of North America at Crazy Horse Memorial. Welcome her to the stage. Welcome, everybody. Okay, so before I'm Betty Washdemi Doc Yapi, welcome friends, esteemed colleagues, and distinguished guests. First, I'd like to have all of our students that are enrolled in the Fall Wheezy Paw program. It is a sustainability and leadership program that we have in partnership with South Dakota State University. If you guys could all stand, we have joining us this fall at the Indian University in North America, Angelita Zephyr. Avery Wide Eyes, Cecilia Watomi, Sage Taken Alive, Amy Tafoya, Alexandra Sanchez, James Jones, Andy James, Tashina Ironhorse, Andrea Garnett, Diana DeLeon, and Sierra Birdshead. If you give them a round of applause, they are currently in their program. All right, it is with immense pride and joy that I stand before you today to present the Crazy Horse Educator of the Year Award. In 2003, Crazy Horse Memorial Foundation created a tribute to indigenous educators. The Crazy Horse Educator of the Year Award honors an individual who has made significant contributions to Native American education. This prestigious honor recognizes an individual whose unwavering commitment to education has left an indelible mark on the lives of countless students and whose dedication to the pursuit of knowledge has inspired all of those fortunate enough to cross their path. In the world of education, there are many who strive for excellence, but only a select few who truly embody it. Today, we celebrate an individual whose passion for teaching transcends the classroom, whose innovation and pedagogy knows no bounds, and whose profound impact on the educational landscape is felt far and wide. The recipient of this award has not only mastered the art of teaching, but has also redefined it. They have fostered an environment of inclusivity where every student feels valued and empowered. Their commitment to nurturing the potential within each student has transformed ordinary classrooms into vibrant centers of learning and personal growth. Beyond the confines of the classroom, this educator has been a mentor, a guide, and a source of unwavering support. Their dedication to their student extends far beyond the, class, the school year leaving a lasting impression that shapes the future of those fortunate enough to have been under their tutelage. In a world of constant change, this educator has embraced innovation with open arms, utilizing technology and modern teaching methods to engage and inspire the next generation. They have shown that true education is not confined to textbooks, but is a dynamic evolving process that adapts to the needs of learners. As we honor this exceptional educator today, let us acknowledge the countless teachers who work tirelessly every day, making a profound difference in the lives of their students. The Crazy Horse Educator of the Year Award is not just a recognition of one person's achievements. It is a celebration of the entire teaching, 
profession and the vital role it plays in shaping the future of our Native American education. So with great pleasure and deepest admiration, I present the Crazy Horse Educator of the Year Award to an educator whose passion, dedication, and unwavering belief in the transformative power of education have touched us all. May their example continue to inspire us to strive for excellence in our noble pursuit of knowledge. Hailing from the Wakpa Washte Oyate, or Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe, Johnny Hurdle, Wakayaje Tewichila Wia woman, woman who loves children, demonstrates all of the Lakota core values in her everyday life. She is humble, respectful, perseveres, wise, generous, compassionate, and brave. In addition to being a supportive and loving mother, grandmother, sister, daughter, and friend to all she has been teaching for nearly two decades, Johnny received her elementary education from Oglala Lakota College and earned her first Master of Arts in Education degree in teaching, learning, and education. Oh, sorry, teaching, learning, and leadership from the University of Minnesota. Recently, Ms. Hurdle earned her education specialist in education administration and leadership. In 2023, Johnny Hurdle earned Rapid City Area Schools Teacher of the Year. Ms. Hurdle also received a Rapid City Public Schools Foundation Cultivating the Arts Grant, an after-school program to cultivate the artistic talents of our students. Paintings sold at that auction were used to further um, purchase items such as Native American flutes, drums, and ribbon skirt materials for the Lakota Culture Club and af other after-school clubs. Johnny also was key in in the first winter Wachipi at General Beto Elementary in 2022. Johnny has been key to a statewide initiative to incorporate the Ocheti Shakoni Essential Understandings in K-12 core curriculum. She has created lessons, provided technical assistance, and served as a model to successful integration of indigenous language, culture, and language in everyday lessons. So join me in congratulating the 2023 year Crazy Horse Educator of the Year Thank you, Johnny, for your outstanding contributions to Indigenous education. Angel, please don't make me cry because I don't want to be up here blowing bubbles from my nose. <laughs> um, what an amazing um, honor to be standing up here today. Very emotional for me. Um, last night when I was finishing my skirt, I was deep in thought and it was one in the morning and I was sitting there and I was thinking about my grandmother Lucy and one of the things that I remember is she had done an interview that I had ran across from, uh, ran across recently, and she talked about being sad for not being able to speak her language <coughs> during the boarding school time. My grandfather, Sidney Keith, was a Lakota language instructor. I live my life in the terms of I am what my, grand, what my ancestors prayed for. That gives me the strength and the resilience to keep going for my grandfather, for my grandmother, for Ina, 
for my Lakshi, for my two wees, and for my grandchildren so that they know a life in the educational system that includes them, that doesn't try to erase them. So I stand before you today and I ask each and every one of you to remember our Wahayeja through the boarding schools till today. That's one thing, remember, they are children. Thank you. <laughs> to make me cry. <laughs> Very inspirational. All of our speakers, all of our performers today, our singers. President uh, Lionel Bordeaux from Cynthia Gleshka College, one of the founders and leaders for the American Indian Higher Education Consortium always reminded us before we start our meetings to say a prayer and to close with a prayer. So he made his journey about a, this past year or so and uh, we carry on that tradition at our organization and we remember those teachings of our the ones who have gone by have traveled on uh, in today's life and how we carry ourselves and how we live our lives and how do we try to be good men and women so with that I'm once again pleased to be asked to do the closing prayer for us today and I want to talk a little bit about our ceremonies and and a lot of times we stand up but I'm asking you just to stay seated today. For when we pray in our ceremonies, we're usually sitting down. We're usually sitting down in our Nipi ceremony, our sweat lodge ceremony. We sit uh, down in our uh, other ceremonies as well. And so we remember that today. And as we talk about Native American today and trying to bring back these and piece back together and revitalize our cultures and our languages is so important to recognize the influence of Western society on us as well and how we need to come back and revitalize and capture what may have been lost and bring it back into contemporary times. And educators, not only our relative here who was recognized today, but all educators out there need to remember this as we move forward. So again, if you join me in prayer, uh, let's pray together. We come before you once again in thanksgiving for the many blessings you've bestowed upon us. We thank you for your grace upon our lives and for all that you do, both seen and unseen. We pray in thanksgiving for the opportunities that you put in front of us in order to achieve and to influence lives and to make things better on behalf of ourselves and our families, our communities, and our nations. We pray that you continue to be with us as we walk down this road, that you will put everything in our way that we need in order to have success. All of the relatives that are gathered here today, those from tribal nations, those from non-tribal nations, those from, our over from overseas who are with us here today, we pray that you watch over us and guide us and direct us to help us to be that good relative that you have us to be. We thank you for always being there for us, for always watching out for us. We remember those that are mourning, those that are grieving, that are having difficult times. We'll have lift them up to you to, for comfort. We remember those that are vulnerable, our children and our elders. We pray that you look after them and put a protection upon them. We remember our veterans both those who are serving and those who have served. And we ask that you, for those that are serving, that you bring them home safely to us 
and those that have returned home to us, we pray blessings upon them on their healing journeys like our own. Thank you for listening and hearing our prayer today and bringing us together for this recognition of Native American Day. We pray special blessings upon our hosts, the Crazy Horse Memorial Foundation, and all those that work here, and all those that provide this educational resource for all of us to learn more about our people and our good way of life. Thank you for this time to pray and for always being there for us. How Matakuas and all my relatives. With that, I believe our veterans will be. Oh, okay. Oh, we're going to leave our staffs up and they'll be taken down later. So, with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's give another round of applause to those that have all come and shared their talents with us today, shared their words of wisdom, shared their accomplishments and for being with us here today. And we want to thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your attendance of the 33rd Annual Native Americans Day celebration at the Crazy Horse Memorial. A few notes before you leave. Thank you to Custer State Park, who provided the buffalo meat for our stew and Korchak's heritage for their generous help. Our complimentary buffalo stew will be served until 3.30 p.m., so you better go get yourself some buffalo. Free craft workshops are being conducted in the galleries of the mu museum. Crafts include dream catchers, corn husk dolls, God's eyes, and miniature shields and dance sticks. Also, all the way from Alaska, Bamua is here with us today. Bamua is an Inuit soul musical group and will be hosting participatory dance and music sessions at 12.30, 1.30, and 2.30. Thank you, and enjoy your day. Wopita chichiapado. Hatch it to you.